Hello everyone and welcome to High School Soccer on WOSN. Alongside Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Evan Skilleter and tonight it's a big time state semi-final matchup between the Ottawa Glandorf Titans and the Manchester High School out of Akron. So my goodness, state finals, Jerry, we get to see two teams that really don't see each other very often, two teams from different parts of the state. Beautiful facility here, Mansfield Madison High School. Jerry, I couldn't be more excited for this hey, one. Yeah, I'll tell you what, gr what a great time of year. We're so blessed with good weather for this. You know, you look through the years and we've had snow, we've had wind. We really have a calm night tonight. It's cooled down. Manchester, a lot of people not so familiar with them, have had a lot of success the last three years in particular and won their second uh, district title this year and have come close. And they're in the Principals Athletic Conference in the Af uh, Akron area. Very nice. The starters are being read. We'll actually read them for you now as well. First for Ottawa Glandorf wearing the white uniforms tonight. They start with Kaylin Grothaus, Carly Brinkman, Carson Erford, Bree Douglas, Clara Beach, Mackenzie Recker, Savannah Recker, Madeline Hovist, Micah Aldrich, Megan Horstman, and in goal, it's Emma Brinkman. For the other side, Manchester starts with Katie Norris, a 50-goal scorer, getting really close to 100 goals for her career at Manchester. She starts with Grace Souls, Kennedy Bull, Haley Craddock, Gina Tipton, Ella Craddock, Maddie Cox, the goalkeeper, Maya Shaber, Carrie Clark, Emily Altman, and Lauren Gunsett. Now, obviously, uh, being from the Lima area, we're very familiar with this Ottawa Glandorf team, a team that has only surrendered nine goals this entire season, and eight of those came in two different games against Division One opponents. Yes, we've covered them, you know, a couple of times this year, and you know they've played two powerhouses, and and their losses to Anthony Wayne High School and Perrysburg High School, who are tremendous soccer powers in Northwest Ohio. You look on the other side of the coin with uh, Manchester, and they're just a, an incredibly high-powered offense. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Absolutely. Manchester comes in too tonight, 19-1 and one overall. We mentioned Katie Norris, a 50-goal scorer, 23 assists to go along with that, and three goals away from 100 career goals. Lauren Gunsett, a uh, junior midfielder, she's scored 24 goals and has 11 assists this season. Gina Tipton tacked on 24 goals and eight assists. She's a junior forward. And then Kennedy Bull, five goals, five assists. Uh, a player that's very, very versatile. She'll play in the back sometimes. She'll move up to midfield. And so a lot of offense and a lot of really good players on this field tonight. Unfortunately, the Titans will be missing uh, a couple players uh, to injury, which is unfortunate. Yes, it, it really is. You know, you get to this point in the season, and, you know, you do talk about the length of the season, and soccer is such a grueling sport, especially on the knees of players. And, you know, they're missing two key players tonight. Uh, in Maya, or excuse me, in uh, Emma Brinkman, I, or excuse me, no. Um, it's McKenna Recker. Mc, that's right, McKenna Recker, and they're going to miss her, I'm yes. Sorry, yeah. and, uh, and Lily Hazelman. Yep, and they're really going to miss Hazelman. I, I really believe that. And But then again, they have been so solid. Ottawa Glendorf, the Lady Titans, have been so solid on defense uh, with uh, Emma Brinkman in the goal and all the shutouts that she has on the year. You know, they've really relied on her. She can flip the field very easily. She has 47 saves on the year, 16 shutouts, and uh, has allowed, as you mentioned, only nine goals on the year. Yeah, the Titans, 19 wins, one loss, two ties. That loss to a Division I school, and then the two ties, one was to a Division I school as well. So it is time for the national anthem here as we step aside. But when we return, it's kickoff here in Mansfield. You're watching High School Playoff Soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. We welcome you back to Madison High School where we are about ready for kickoff in this state semifinal between Manchester High School and Ottawa Glandorf. It'll be Manchester starting with the ball, wearing the black uniforms, moving left to right on your screen. The Titans wearing all white and we are underway. A trip to Columbus on the line and 
It's Ottawa Glendorf looking for their second straight trip to the state final as they came up just a game short last year, losing in that final. You know, too, I, I really think going into this game, I think the experience factor, 10 of the 11 starters for Manchester are juniors. Mm. And now, again, they've been playing since their freshman year, so that takes a little bit of it out. But uh, Ottawa Glandorf, a very experienced, very mature team, physical, and um, I think that experience will play a big role in this game. Yeah, and you mentioned that experience, but the other thing is, the Titans, while they are experienced, they also have a pretty young team. A yes, lot of do. these players will be back next year as well. So this is a team that expects to win this game and, and make it to the next round. If they do, that's great. Um, but a team that expects to do it next year as well. I mean, we may see these, these Titans surrender less than nine goals next year. Well, you know, too, I, I mean, obviously with Ottawa Glendorf and all of their sports programs, you know, expectations are high and... Um, they meet those expecta expectations. They're very solid in their athletic program. Manchester's relatively new. Uh, I know that in my former role, I worked with them quite a bit. And they were just coming on a little bit. And one of the things in soccer, you know, I, I know that club sports and all that, travel sports, get a lot of bad press, and, and rightly so in a lot of cases. But one of the things about soccer is to be good in soccer, you have to play in the club world. And that's something that their coach, you know, at Manchester has really brought into them. And as a result, their their success has increased. And one gets through to the goalkeeper, but picked up with no problem. That's Matty Cox back there for Manchester. Cox, a junior goalkeeper. As Jerry said, most of these players are juniors or below. In fact, just one senior on this roster. Right. Now the Titans working down the left side. This is Clara Beach. Beach with the cross, and that one's knocked out wide left of the goal. Good attacking right now, you know, from Ottawa Glandorf. You know, they, a couple of their keys, you know, they need, with that high-powered offense of Manchester, they need all 11 players to play defense, and that's going to be a big thing. You know, you hear both teams talk about winning the 50-50 ball, but I know that Coach Michelle Mag, you know, that's big in their case tonight. And they really need to be quick on transition, and I think we've seen that so far. And you mentioned the high-powered offense for Manchester. How beneficial is it for Ottawa Glendorf to play a conference schedule primarily made up of Division II schools that are not just Division II, but also very good Division II schools? Yeah, not only I think that's where I think that when I talk about experience, I think that's where that's so key. And then they load up their non-league schedule, right. you know, as I said, with a couple of Division I powers. You know, too, you know, you look at the high-powered scoring I keep talking about for Manchester, but something like I think I forget something like 35 of those goals came against one opponent, Ooh. meaning <laughs> meaning in three different contests in which right. they played. You know, a 12-0 shutout. Uh, so sometimes those numbers, you know, statistics can be a little deceiving at times. And here come the Titans once again down the left side. Bree Douglas, the leading scorer for this Titan team, working down the left. Nice cut back inside. She's tripped up a bit, but still has possession. Douglas still on her feet. Now with Kaylin Grothaus. Grothaus to the center. And maybe a shot coming up, and that's blocked by the defense. And another one kicked off of the referee, and who will stop play? A new ish rule in soccer if the ball goes off the referee. Uh, now they blow it dead. Uh, they used to just... Let right. it play on play and on. consider the referee a part of the field. So, let's see. So, who gets the kick here? Is it just a drop kick? It is. Is it sent to midfield by Manchester? They were looking for Gina Tipton, but she's not able to get on the end of it. Now back to the Titan defense. Titans trying to work it up the right side as it goes off Manchester for a throw. You can see the confidence with the Titans. As soon as they get that ball you on sure a throw can. in, they're ready to go. As soon as there's a free kick, they put it down. They want to go. As you see them getting up the field, no foul called there as the Titans into the box. Cross. Douglas tries to get their ball still loose. And no good as it goes off the right side. Two Titans were breathing down the neck of the goalkeeper, Cox, but ultimately nothing doing. Yeah, and you see in games like this where, you know, two opponents on opposite ends of the state for the most part, you know, and you look at, like, 
you know, feeling each other out a little mm. bit and the confidence factor that goes with that. And you're really seeing that right now. The ball has been uh, in control of the Titan, Lady Titans, you know, so far. And you can sa- kind of sense that building confidence as a result of that in early on. Aldrich intercepts the pass, but it's taken right back. It's with Hallie Craddock. Now to the middle of the field. And Manchester's attack thwarted. Nice clearance by Ottawa Glandorf. That was defender Megan Horstman. This ball goes across the line and a goal kick for Manchester. I've been impressed all year long with Otto Glandorf's speed. Mm. I talk about their strength, their physicality, but they have had so much speed. And it's, it's showing early. And they're a team, too, that they're not one-dimensional. They can attack down the left. They can attack down the right. Heck, if they get some space in the middle, they'll just walk it right through the defense. There's no good one way to defend this team. Manchester has really kind of established themselves in the last two or three years as the really predominant. I mean, obviously, they're in the state semifinal, but they've really established themselves as a kind of the premier Division Three school in the Akron area. Cox comes out and grabs that. Now, for people that are not familiar with Northeast Ohio and smaller schools like me, um, how many small schools do they have up there? What's the concentration of small yeah, to I big? I don't know the exact number. That's a good question. You know, but you know, when you get to Northwest Ohio, you know, again, depending on how you break them up, whether it's Division One, Two, Three, and Four, or Division A, or excuse me, uh, One, Two, and Three in the case of soccer. Sure. There's a huge, huge predominance of Division Four schools. Uh, in Northwest Ohio compared to the Northeast. And in the Northeast, it's just the opposite. There mm. are so many Division I schools. So, you know, it, it's how does that play out in the regional? I mean, you, you could say, well, maybe it's easier to get to the regional. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. It might be in some sports if you're a small school. Douglas comes over and takes that one away from Craddock. Now a heavy touch, and Titans able to keep possession, moving down the left side. Really great ball control. This is Groathouse. Groathouse has it knocked away. Ball cleared up to Katie Norris. Norris, the 50-goal scorer for the Manchester team. And look at those wheels as yes. she gets a little space. Now drops it off for Gina Tipton. Tipton with 24 goals this season. Now some good communication as Manchester works it up the left side. Right, Manchester showing there their great ball control and their great speed. Can you see the Titans restart as quickly as they can, but running right into the Manchester defense. They switch fields now. Hallie Craddock, Craddock to the center to Tipton, and Aldrich steps in. Aldrich. And the Titans trying to send it out left to Bree Douglas, but the ball intercepted and knocked right back to Clara Beach. Beach finds Douglas with some space. Good touch from Douglas as she cuts inside. Now great touch and great passing. Cleared away, but only as far as Bree Douglas, and Douglas takes a hard hit right off of Grace Souls. Now the Titans again able to take it away. That was Mackenzie Wrecker, Wrecker with 13 goals, 8 assists this season, and really the Titans with a lot of different girls that can score. Bree Douglas, 21 goals, Clara Beach, 12, Mackenzie Wrecker, 13, Micah Aldrich, 13 goals, and each of those have at least 8 assists to go with them. Well, you know, too, and again, I guess both teams can say this, but when you're in the state semifinal, and if you look at the scores throughout the year, and, you know, in both cases, They've been, had the opportunity to play a lot of players, and that's that's big now. That experience really shows here in a state semifinal game. Titans spending a lot of time in their final third. So they have a throw on the far side. They get it into Beach. Beach is an impressive player, too, because she really is kind of a center forward, but you'll see her drift all the way right, all the way left. She's comfortable working it down the sides and crossing it into the box. Now, again, the Titans able to anticipate a pass. They take it away, but given right back to Manchester. Souls works it up the left. Now Norris. 
Jeez, I mean, this Titan team is just so good at pressing the offense. As soon as they touch the ball, there's not much space, but Norris is going to try a deep shot. That's well left. And sometimes you see those deep shots kind of out of frustration when you, you don't do. really have anything going for you. You and just got to get something right. going toward the goal. And this has been about the first opportunity they've had. So you can kind of see that, like, I've got a chance. I need to take the shot. So a goal kick coming up for the Titans. Emma Brinkman, the goalkeeper for Ottawa Glandorf, and obviously a very successful season, as we said. Only nine goals surrendered for the entire year, eight of which came in two different games. So you think about how many shutouts this team has had. They haven't given up a goal in the playoffs so far. Right. As a matter of fact, the last time they surrendered a goal was against Bluffton September 8th. Right. <laughs> September 8th. Think about how long ago that was. Two months without surrendering or surrendering a goal as Bree Douglas keeps it in and it's knocked out for a throw by Emily Allman. You know, too, something pretty unique, you know, in high school, I think, you know, that success for teams. You, you, I mentioned about, you know, the expectations of success for Ottawa Glandorf. You, know, you look at women, girls basketball, you look at boys basketball, you look, you know, in year in and year out and not just those sports, but all their sports. They're so successful. Mm. And as a result of that, it just rubs off and it's, you know, it becomes a culture in your school. Jerry, how do you build a culture like that? How, how do we have all of these communities? And again, we're from Northwest Ohio. We see a lot of communities like this. I'm sure that's the case across the entire state. But what does it take for a community to build a culture where they just breathe sports success? Yeah, you know, and you hear this term a lot. That's a great question. But you hear the term, you know, it, it takes a village. Mm. And, and I, I just really believe that. You look at the Mac schools. You know, the cold waters, the, the Marion locals, you know, and I used to always be asked around the state, how do they do it? Yeah. I mean, you know, they've got kids just like anybody else. And but but it's such a culture, the families, I mean, go to a game in any of those places and it's supportive. Um, not that it isn't in other places, but it's the thing to do is to support kids. And I think that culture uh, is created by, you know, taking an entire village, not just students, not just teachers, but everybody. Uh, it's a great answer as the Titans try to work it down the left side, but that pass well out of reach of everyone as Cox comes over and just clears it out for a throw, trying to play it safe. But now the Titans will be able to push numbers forward with 27-20 to go on the structure outdoor scoreboard here in the first half. Ball thrown in for Grodhouse. Now a nice cross into the box, knocked down by the Manchester defense. Cleared away only as far as Grote House as she does a nice job getting around a defender. Grote House, nice and patient. Drops it back for Aldrich. Aldrich with the drag back. Aldrich with the shot yeah, wow. and a good shot, but no problem for Cox. My goodness, I don't know if anyone expected that one. No, and, and boy, she, you know, uh, she sure had some strength on that and a good hard shot. You can talk about a lot of things that this Titan team does well, but I think the most impressive to me, maybe not the speed, maybe not the scoring prowess, maybe not the defense. For me, it's how comfortable they are with the ball at their feet. You just don't see that as much at this level. You might see a player or two that have great foot skills, but you just don't see a lot, a whole team that no matter who has it, they're comfortable with the ball at their feet. Defenders don't disturb them, and they're able to dribble around and make things happen. You're right. They all do. And I think that's a, that's really a, a team thing. That's a hard to put your finger on. But, you know, each player, I think, helps everybody else. Right. I, I, I think, you know, practices, you know, the confidence that they instill, it's not – it's not just a raw, raw leadership type. It's a helping type leadership. But I think so important in high school sports today. Absolutely. And they've been showing that off here. Manchester still trying to get something going toward their goal. They do have a shot, but it was wide left. Norris sending it far left to Ella Craddock. Craddock, a nice tackle on the far side, and she's dispossessed. This one will go out for a tight throw, and we'll have some substitutions with that. We'll step aside with 25-19 on the clock. We'll be right back with more high school soccer after this.
Welcome back to Madison High School in... Sorry, I had some audio difficulties there, but welcome back to Madison High School where we are scoreless in the state semifinal between Ottawa Glandorf and Manchester of Akron. Mansfield, the home of tonight's game. Madison High School, the hosts. Boy, I give a big shout out to Doug Rickert, the uh, athletic director here, you know, and he has a, uh, a basketball scrimmage going on in the gymnasium. Um, you know, when you look at it, you know, what's in it for him here? I mean, he's, he's helping out two teams, you right. know, and two communities. And I, you know, having served as a tournament manager for a number of years, um, it's, it's hard. It's difficult. Could be home tonight, you know, in front of, you know, watching TV. Got to get up and go to school tomorrow morning. And so a big shout out to those guys that do this. I read this week, you know, somebody was talking about, you know, complaining about where they played or whatever. And I get that. But at the same time, I one of my athletic director friends put out, said, what you should be telling those athletic directors or tournament managers, thank you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> How true that is. Exactly. Beautiful facilities here and a nice smooth process, parking, getting into here. And I smell pizza. I haven't eaten any yet, but appreciate the hospitality as Douglas dribbles into the defense. Cleared away by Emily Allman. Now Norris trying to counter with Akron, or with, sorry, with Manchester. You know, Manchester really trying to establish themselves on the statewide map, too. You know, they've 19 wins in a row, finished second in the Ohio Scholastic Soccer Coaches Association poll. And uh, they want, you know, they've taken that step to get to the state semifinals, the final four. They want to get one more. Norris sends it up to Tipton. Tipton has her pass taken away, cleared up the right side. Picked up by Maya Shaber. Now maybe some space in midfield for the Titans to work. Try to go outside to Douglas, taken away by Kerry Clark. Beach has been so effective throughout the year, you mm. know, on the, on the outside, and has you know, made some great crosses. Yeah, Beach has certainly been fantastic for this team. Twelve goals, eleven assists, and. It's always impressive when a player has plenty of goals, but almost as many assists, right. if not more. I think Wayne Gretzky was the one that always said he didn't care. He just wanted to do something to yes. impact scoring. This one will be out for a goal kick. And Titans a team that play on grass, a grass surface yes. throughout most of the yeah. year. And we talked about this in our, our last broadcast with the Titans, but Sometimes it's tough to go from that grass surface to a, a turf field. That ball goes quicker. You, you don't quite expect it to go as fast as it does. You might think you don't need a touch, but then all of a sudden it's zooming past you and out of play. And even though Madison is not in this uh, game today, but right outside the stadium is Madison's grass field stadium. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when you are lining up facilities and you don't know the weather, you know, you, you're going to not take your chances, I guess. Right. But there are some great grass fields around the state of Ohio. Finley High School has a tremendous grass field, stock soccer only. Lexington does. So there are still some very good. And, you know, soccer coaches, it's changing, but they prefer grass. But, again, that's changing. Aldrich with another shot from deep and another nice save by Cox. She slid there just to make sure. Now Aldrich again commanding that midfield, going back and forth. Now she goes down. Play continues. Norris sends it outside. Nice touch on the left by Hallie Craddock. And Titans still able to take it away. Kind of a bend-don't-break mentality here as the Titans really haven't allowed much past about 25 yards out, which if you're looking at the grid on the football field, that's the 15-yard line. And that interception last time really, really highlights what Coach Michelle Mag said about all 11 players needing to play defense. Mm -hmm. Now some space, a deep shot. That's knocked away. Carly Brinkman stepping in to block that shot for the Titans. Now left. Manchester forced to drop it all the way back to the defense. And another takeaway. 
That was Madeline Hovis, now Bree Douglas. Douglas trying to find Beach. Beach off to the races, but good foot speed there by Emily Allman as Allman kicks it out for a Titan throw. Under 20 to play now in the first half. I've watched Bree Douglas, you know, in several games this year, and she was our player of the game one game, and she just has a motor that doesn't stop. Yes. You know, and, you know, she just it doesn't look one bit tired when she's doing it. Couple substitutes entering the game for the Titans. I don't have my binoculars with me. I'm not sure who subbed in on the far side, but either way, Kaylin Grothaus coming over to throw this in for the Titans as she sends it to the edge of the box. Here's Beach. Beach touch pass, and it crosses the line for a goal kick. They were trying to find Douglas out there. You know, talking a little bit, too, about Manchester, you know, and how they've come on to the soccer scene, you know, in, in Division Three, especially from the Northeast area. But, you know, Emma King played, plays at the University of Akron, one of their graduates, one of their assistant coaches, Morgan Schaber, uh, played at uh, uh, Walsh uh, okay. here in, in Ohio and um, is also an assistant coach for them now. Two really good players for them in the past. Norris finds Tipton up the right side. Tipton... Cuts back in, but nobody there as the Titans clear it deep. Grabbed back by Kerry Clark. And that was Carson Erford stepping in, and referee says continue. Yep. Soccer is a contact sport, right. folks. And Play on. Some people don't necessarily realize that, but as long as it's good, clean contact, the referee will let play continue. And that contact sport in the... You know, the physicality of it, you know, has resulted in two major injuries right now for Otto Glandorf. That's right. Again, Manchester drops it back to the defense. And it's another thing I find impressive about teams when you get deep into this, uh, into this tournament. You start to see teams that are not afraid to drop it back to their right. defense. They're confident with any of their players with the ball at their feet. It's such a luxury when you're able to Send it back and create some space for your team to work. Aldrich in midfield again. Ball knocked up in the air, brought down by the Titans, knotted forward. It's Grodhouse finding Douglas. Douglas goes down. And that, according to the referee, it's not clean contact. So now free kick, interesting spot for the Titans, about 35 yards out. But, you know, you're right. You know, so many times, you know, fans see that. I wasn't sure it was going to be called. I thought it might have been clean. But, um, you know, you, they see that. They see the violence of the uh, player going down and think automatically that it's a penalty. Here's a shot from the Titans off the free kick, which was taken by Carly Brinkman. Again, the Titans stepping up, taking the ball back. Trying to keep it in, but not able to was Carly Brinkman. Or, excuse me, that was Kalen Grothaus. So Manchester throws it in. Norris working up the right. Now sends it up to Jaden McKinney. McKinney giving chase. That goes out and a goal kick. 16-20 on the clock. We'll step aside again. You're watching High School Playoff Soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. We welcome you back to Madison High School in Man Mansfield where it's 0-0 on that Structure Outdoor scoreboard. Evan Skilleter and Jerry Snodgrass with you tonight. Courtesy of WOSN, Jacob O'Neill on the camera. Micah Aldrich working forward from her midfield role. She sends the ball back for the Titans. Bree Douglas giving chase, but a nice clearance by Manchester. That was Lauren Gunsick coming over and knocking it out. Ball back to Grothaus. Grothaus finds Aldrich. Aldrich, nice footwork. And that ball just skipped right over the foot of Douglas and out for a throw. Is 
Manchester with a substitution on the far side. 15 minutes left in this first half. You know, unless you follow a lot of soccer, it's hard for people to realize how in shape <laughs> that, that these players are. I mean, they just, I, I mentioned earlier about Bree Douglas, but they just run, 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 and, you know, ball goes out of bounds. And, they, and like we said before with Albert Glandorf, they're quick to throw it in and keep going. And it just the only way you do that was tremendous conditioning. Yeah, Jerry, as I, as I get older, and I know you have a few years on me, but the older I get, the harder it is to do anything <laughs> physically active <laughs> as this one goes into the box and it's knocked up in the air by Kerry Clark. You know, I'm a professor at Bluffton University and uh, I have some basketball players in class. And I used to be a, a decent basketball player. So after class one day, I asked them to I asked one of them to play me in one-on-one. -on -one. I only made it two points before I had to sit down and catch my breath. <laughs> um, so I can't imagine going out right. here and trying to run for an entire soccer match. Well, for our younger viewers, I can tell you that, you know, I based all of that on when I was coaching basketball, that the year that I no longer got chosen, um, <laughs> you know, to play in open right. gyms. And then I had to exert my authority as a coach and say, I'll make the team, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was about 35 years old. I was done. Oh, that means I have five years left. We'll see yeah. how that works out <laughs> for me. As that one goes out of play, Titans will have it throw in on the near side. Yeah, I'd love to tell you it was three years ago too, but you know, for <laughs> me, but not quite. But that's you know, I, 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 we all I think are very envious of the ability of these student athletes to be able to do this. Absolutely. Let alone, you know, you stop and think about it. You know, they. When I say practice, I said you know the the legal, if you want to call it practice. I mean they're playing year round, but. You know, they begin the 1st of August. Right. You know, here we are, you know, mid-November almost. And so, I mean, that's a long time to be able to be to be doing this. And a lot of these players will go on to play a winter sport and really won't have Correct. a break between this and their next endeavor, whether it's basketball right. or swimming or think about wrestling and all the different right. winter sports. I mean, it's – some of them go into the spring, right? It's just oh, yes. incredible – Year-round, these athletes are, are That's busy. a topic in its own right, you know, the year-round yeah. part, and especially how young it starts. But that's for another day. Great touch here by Aldrich. She has some space. She's got Douglas crashing the back post. Aldrich takes a couple touches, takes the shot, and it's blocked. Good recovery by Manchester as that was precarious. Now Bree Douglas with Good the cross, cross into the box, knotted away by the defense. And now... Don't know if that was a slide tackle by Groathouse or not, but either way, Manchester comes up with it. Norris trying to start the counter, and her pass gets away from her as the Titans step in and take it away. My goodness, how about that touch from Aldrich right there to yes. get around the defender and run on the end of the ball? You know, I mentioned earlier one of Coach Mag's, you know, goals was to you know be very quick in transition and then you know from throwing in throw ins to you name it and they've done a very good job of that you know whenever a steal whenever an intercept you know that they're right on the attack ball cleared forward knotted down by manchester tipton now norris Norris's pass cut out. Good read there by Carly Brinkman, but it's taken right back. And out for a tight end throw. And again, yeah. it's not that Manchester hasn't had possession of the ball, but really they haven't done anything inside the box or really inside their final third. The one shot that they had was from about 30 yards out. Well, and you really do have to credit the Ottawa Glandorf defense on that. You know, they're not getting behind players. You know, they, they've been there you know inner, you know right in front of every pass right in front of every uh, controlled uh, ball here's beach she's trying to pick out her teammate on the left side mckenzie wrecker again taken away by manchester working through midfield tipton finds norris norris thinks about a shot nice fake shot as she pulls it down shoots with her left and i think that was off the back of tipton it was yep now the Titans trying to pressure that back line as they oh, send wow. it back. Aldridge gets in wow. the way, and 
Referee raises the flag. Not sure what he called, but either way. Yeah. Is she out? Was, no? No. Yeah. Not I don't sure. know what the foul was. Well, free kick for Manchester. Brought down by Carly Brinkman. Sorry, that was Carson Erford. Sent out for a throw. Kennedy Bowl has it taken away. Here come the Titans down the right side. A little bit of space. Now a heavy touch allows the Manchester defense to recover and send it out for the throw. Titans want to go quickly, but no one open, so they'll take their time. Now sending it back down the line. Ball stays in play. Now on the left. Good work from Beach. Beach, she's tackled, and a solid tackle there by Jaden McKinney. Kind of a dangerous one, too, coming from behind the player, but as long as you get that ball and don't make contact before you get the ball, you'll be fine. And actually, the referee did call a foul. I missed that. It's hard. We, we don't have – we're yeah. not outside, right? We've got these windows, so didn't hear a whistle, but it's a free kick. Boy, give Beach a lot of credit for that. Roadhouse takes the kick, goes center of the box, knotted up in the air. Norris heads it up a second time. Titans pressuring as the ball stays in. How in the world? I have no idea. The Titans still with possession. Good movement. Beach trying to switch fields, puts it right into the center. Now the Titans trying to get something going in that box, but it's knocked away. Boy, that was tremendous control that time by the Titans. Titans still pressuring, even though Manchester have the ball. Carson Erford takes it away. Yep. Erford with the cross, top of the box. Brought down by Grothaus and cleared away once again. Tipton working hard to get possession. Now ball to the midfield. Here's Norris. She's dangerous. 50 goals this season. Norris with it on her right foot. Now cuts to her left. Now back to her right, and she scuffs that shot. I don't think she got all that she wanted of it, but still a shot on goal. And once again, a tightened defense. I mean, they're there. Nothing has come easy for uh, Manchester. Well, you know, Manchester certainly is pushing numbers back defensively. So as soon as they try that counter, and y you could see right there, Norris had the ball, and she was going against the entire defense. Right. Really no outlet as her team was still trying to get back on offense as they force so many numbers back trying to prevent this high-powered offense from scoring. Another substitute checking into this game. That's Hallie Craddock for Manchester. And a dangerous oh, wow. pass as Beach steps in and knocks it back toward the goalkeeper. Cox, no problem coming out to grab it. Cox punts to the middle of the field. Taken away once again by the Titans. Beach sends it outside. Here's Grothaus. Grothaus again patiently waiting as she knocks it back to Beach. Now Norris trying to make a turn to get around Megan Horstman. But again, the Titans wow. take it back. Beach down the left side. Grothaus gives chase. Grothaus left-footed cross, and that's off the goalpost. Seen the Browns do that a couple <laughs> times this year, huh? So a goal kick coming up. I shouldn't mention the Browns. You're a Steelers guy, aren't that's you? Right. Uh, that's my right. My bad, my bad. Guess we can root for the Browns now that... Big Ben's not yeah. there anymore in Pittsburgh. Who is their quarterback? Do they have one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Can he pick it? Okay. I'm a Pittsburgh guy then. All right. That works, but different kind of football here at StarTech Stadium in Mansfield, Madison High School, as the score remains 0-0 on the structure outdoor scoreboard. 
I should mention, too, what a great crowd we have here today. Mm -hmm. Both student sections nice and full. There's one fan sitting across from us <laughs> in the bleachers on the visitor's side. But both schools able to fit over here on the home side. Ball knocked down by Erford. Now Manchester. Norris. Norris looking for Tipton. Taken away. Madeline Hovist. Now Douglas on the right side for the Titans. Aldrich finds Beach. Beach. Awkward angle for a shot. Tries it anyway, and it's knocked away. You mentioned that one fan over there, you know, and that's something that I know when I administrated soccer statewide that it was always difficult, you know, and really the growth of soccer to get people to understand that the ideal setup for soccer is both benches on the same side. Mm -hmm. And that's unusual because most schools, you don't do that in most sports, but uh, it's really come on the way it should be. And um, you see that it's good management. Absolutely. And it's easier for the referees, too. They yes. only have to look to one spot for a substitute, kind of like basketball, right? right. I think right. when when t I watch Kentucky play at Vanderbilt once or twice a year and the, the yes. benches are underneath the baskets, it gets so strange and tough for the referees to figure out. Now at the left side, Grote House. Ball up to Norris, but it goes under her foot, taken away by Horstman. And now this one played into the box. Not sure if it was an attempted shot by McKenzie Recker, but either way, Cox able to slide over and grab it no problem. Well, Jerry, talk to me a little bit about turf fields. These really haven't been popular until, what, the 2000s or, or mid-2000s? Mid I know you kind of led the charge in Finley getting a yeah, uh, turf field. I, yeah, I look at that, and I'm trying to think what year that was, but it was about – probably about 07 or so. I think so. Uh, right around in there, and they just started catching on. And, you know, it's really interesting, too, that, you know, with the shutdown and COVID and everything else, you know, there are a lot of beliefs that, you know, facility stuff, you know, was, boy, really going to, you know, no income by the schools for a year or so, or a year and a half almost. But, boy, they've come on. You know, it's just, you know, you look at it, the maintenance, you know, it's so much better. And seeing how many baseball, softball fields today are becoming turf. Right. Yeah, if you haven't had a chance to see the Defiance uh, yeah. facilities, my goodness, and they have a new basketball gym as well. <laughs> Everything over there in Defiance is very, very nice now. And we have some more substitutes with just over two minutes to go in this first half. Still 0-0, zero, zero, although most would argue it's been mostly Titans in this game. Yes, they've really dominated on the offensive end. Ball out for a Manchester throw, far side. Now, if we do end up having a tie score at the end of regulation, we would go into two minutes, or sorry, two five-minute periods of overtime. And if no score after that, we'll have penalty kicks, one of the most exciting, albeit unfair, ways to end yeah, a, a game. Yeah, you know, I, I always heard a lot about that. You know, I mean, like, you know, how unfair is it? You know, kids have played for 80 minutes and then or longer with overtimes, but you're going to decide a game that way. But, you know, it's an accepted thing in soccer. Sure, they sure. Practice they have it to all do it some long. way, yep. right, right. The only challenge being a little bit that they don't do it during the regular season, but I may look for that to change sometime, but a lot of that has to do with the time factor and lights, yep, a yep. lack of them on some soccer fields, and you have to be consistent. You can't let somebody play by overtime rules and others not. Right, and most college teams, uh, college leagues, have gone away from regular season overtime as Correct. well. And you certainly don't want to have these teams just keep playing until, no, no. until someone scores. That's going to result in plenty of injury. I think the NHL... This one sent toward the OG goal. I think the NHL is able to get away with it because they have so many different players. They rotate Correct. in and out. But in the playoffs, they just keep playing 20-minute periods until somebody scores. Yeah, that would be so tough in oh, soccer. Yeah. 20 seconds left on the clock. Manchester trying to get something going before the end of the half, but a nice clearance by the Titans. Back to midfield. Ball with Ellie Craddock. 
She sends it outside to Hallie Craddock. And that will do it for the first half. Your Structure Outdoor scoreboard reads 0-0 at halftime here at Madison High School between Ottawa Glandorf and Manchester in this state semifinal. We'll have a halftime segment for you coming up after the break right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Mansfield Madison High School where it's 0-0 at halftime. Evan Skilleter and Jerry Snodgrass with you tonight. And Jerry, it's 0-0 on the board. Ottawa Glandorf seemed to have most of the uh, most of the attacking presence in the half, but Lexi, or excuse me, Manchester has hung in there and so far doing a nice job. Well, you know, especially when you look at you know the goal being to shut down that offense and the abilities of that offense, but they've been able to do that, and I think that's a big key for Ottawa Glandorf. I think on the other side, Manchester, you know, they've been able to with very few offensive opportunities still be 0-0. Zero, zero. So, um, you know, it, it's that's why we're where we're at right now. So both teams have played very well, and I think down the stretch here, you know, somebody's going to have to take, care, take advantage of the scoring opportunities they get. Absolutely, and in terms of halftime adjustments, I don't really think we'll see many. I don't think there are many to be made. Manchester really just playing back, trying to play a defensive brand of soccer, and the Titans trying to take advantage but right now like we said 0-0 at the half on WOSN we'll step aside but the second half kickoff coming up after this welcome back to Madison High School for the state semifinal between Ottawa Glandorf and Manchester. Evan Skilleter and Jerry Snodgrass with you tonight. It's 0 0 on our Alts, or Structure Outdoor by Alts scoreboard, excuse me, between the Titans and the Panthers of Manchester High School. Titans trying to get something going early on here. Kaylin Groathaus sends it out left. Bree Douglas, chance to cross. She does. It's not a toward goal, and it's in. Wow. You know, I was just going to say, I do not know what kind of an adjustment you could make if you were out of a gland off at, at halftime. I, I just I don't know what you would do because you've been attacking hard. You've been controlling the 50-50 balls. You've met your goals. You know, you just got to sneak one in, and they just got one in. And it's Clara Beach with her 13th goal of the season. Bree Douglas adding her 14th assist of the year. And the Titans, just 33 seconds into the second half, get the first score on the Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And Clara Beach, boy, she deserved that. She's been so effective so far this game. She's been all over the place. And that ball stayed in, so... Play continues. I think everyone was a little bit confused. Now the referee raises his flag. Uh, it took him a couple minutes there, but now we'll have a throw in. But that's an example there too, though, of you know, out of a of playing through everything. Sure. I mean, they don't. You know, play through. And, hey, sooner or later, you might get one of those. So they'll redo it with a throw for Manchester. Maya Schaber will throw it in, or Shaber, excuse me. Now on the left side, Gunselt. Gunselt passes inside to Souls. Souls has it taken away. Now the Titans wow. trying to counter quickly. Here's Beach. Beach, nice job getting it behind the defense as Douglas runs on the end of it. Douglas, maybe another chance to cross. Beach, a drop for her. She gives it to Clara Beach. Beach has that one knocked away and out for a tight and throw. And that was a great offensive sequence. Exactly. And you know, yeah. when you look at Bree Douglas, I mentioned that earlier. Her speed on the outside, you know, she she got in front of the defender and had a chance for a good cross. Douglas with another cross right there, but it's knocked away by Manchester. Again, the Titan defense 
Holding strong, Carly Brinkman takes it away. Now Douglas has it on the far side. Douglas trying to get around a defender, but a nice job holding tough as Douglas gets it back. Now it's taken away. <laughs> nice jostle for possession right there as Douglas able to get it out left. Maybe another chance to cross. Ball toward the touch line. Now cross, knocked away, and a corner coming now up. Now that's our first corner kick yeah, of the night. We haven't seen any of those yet. But credit Otto Glandor for the attacking on that to be able to get it. It'll be Douglas to take. Four Titans lined up on the edge of the box, back post. Clara Beach on near the near post. This one sent toward Beach. Beach tries to nod it behind her. Still some trouble. There's a shot. Ball still loose. Some work to do. And now finally cleared out of the box by Manchester. But still some work to do as the clearance scuffed wide and taken by Bree Douglas. Douglas looking for a cross. Sends it into the box. And a nice job by Cox coming out to grab it. These first four minutes almost. Boy, out of Glendorf has really put the pressure on. Sometimes one goal can really open the gates. Remember, the Titans, a team that haven't given up a goal the entire postseason, really haven't given up a goal since September 8th, Wow! which is just an incredible stat. I remember watching, you know, having their game against Shawnee earlier in the year in a Western Buckeye League game, and it was kind of the same thing. I don't think it was 0-0 at the half, but it was pretty close, and all of a sudden a barrage yeah. after the first goal that they scored. And that's the other thing, WBL, a division, or a, a conference, excuse me, or league that is primarily made up of Division II schools, and the Titans did not give up a single goal in conference play. Right. Not one. Not a single goal in conference play and not a single goal in the tournament to date. Still some work to do, 35 and change on the clock. Aldrich gets it ahead to Douglas. Douglas. Passes it up. That was Beach, the goal scorer. And now Manchester takes it away. But again, with that defense sagging back, they really don't have a ton of options moving forward as the Titans step up and knock it into the opposite half. Should mention that the winner of this goes on to play in the state championship game Saturday, or excuse me, Friday. And uh, I believe, I haven't looked, but it's usually a time to be determined because... I know in years past we would always keep that as a TBA to work around schools that are in volleyball if the same school happens to be there, and, and it only made sense to do that. So by keeping it as a TBA, you can you know adjust the times into one of the three slots on Friday. And there's fo football to contend and with as well, quit. especially with the expanded playoffs. A lot yeah, of teams wanna, still playing. If you can keep from putting a, a soccer championship team you know on a Friday night game, when you're, if your football team's in, I mean, it only makes sense for attendance reasons and everything else. And fans, obviously, so they can watch their, their school. Meanwhile, the Titans get in behind the defense. They, Manchester comes over. They clear it away, and the Titans get another corner. And boys in Ohio play their state semifinals tomorrow night on Wednesday and turn around and play their state championship games on Saturday. That's right, and the Shawnee Indians playing... Yes. Here in Mansfield. Is that one crossed into the box? Another dangerous one. Still a chance. Now finally cleared away by Manchester. Man, the Indians have had a great year as well. Trying to get over that hump. They've had some great teams yes, lately have. and just haven't been able to get to the state final. Big chance coming up tomorrow. They're back here somewhere. Yeah. I'm not sure where they're playing. Mansfield, now. right. They might be at Clear Fork. I'm not That's sure. That's right. It is Clear they Fork. Are. Yep. Just south of here. Right. This one sent up the line. Titans take it away, but the pass is scuffed wide. A couple substitutes. Actually, just one ready to check in on the far side for the Titans as the Panthers restart play. Ball sent up to Gina Tipton, but taken away. Here's Mackenzie Wrecker. Wrecker, nice, tough play. Runs into a defender. She's hurt. Play will continue until the Titans can get possession back. Play still going on. Now it goes out, and the referee will stop play with 33.06 on the clock. They'll check 
on the injured player as we step aside. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. But Structure Outdoor Ohio, bring your indoors out. one nothing on that Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard with just over 33 minutes to play here in the second half of this state semifinal in Division Three. The Titans of Ottawa Glandorf on top of the Panthers from Manchester High School in Akron. Evan Skilleter and Jerry Snodgrass with you and the injured player Mackenzie Recker able to get up and walk off the field under her own power. That's good to see because she hit hard. And sometimes those hits can knock the wind out of you or, right. if nothing else, just scare you, right? And right. i got to get checked out here before yeah, I she's going full continue. Going, full yeah. speed, you know, and really doesn't see that defender in front of her, and all of a sudden, bam. Fight for possession in midfield. Not too much going on offensively. For Manchester tonight, a couple shots, but all from deep. They really haven't challenged the Titan goalkeeper. Emma Brinkman back there in goal for the Titans, and now maybe a chance to counter. Pass cut out, but still some work to do. Nice job by Aldrich getting it outside to Clara Beach. Beach, edge of the box. Beach into the box. Gets around the defender, the cross. And no one there, but how about the effort from Beach <laughs> as she gets around a defender and the composure right on the line to play that ball into the box. Now maybe something developing for Manchester. They send it outside deep and able to keep it in was Kennedy Bowl. It'll go out of play. Manchester throw on the far side. First time this half, it's really been in the offensive end here. Their offensive end. Yeah, they really just have not been able to gain control or possession in a threatening position. They've done a nice job moving the ball through the midfield and across the back line, but as soon as they get into the teeth of that defense, they have come up empty. Again, they try to send it to the back line. Now maybe a chance as Norris has the ball, and she has a strong left foot, but she wasn't able to get on that one. And now looks like she twisted an ankle as she's a little slow to get up, but she is up and running. And you are starting to see a little bit more aggressive play on the offensive end by, um, by uh, Manchester here. Nice clearance right there. In the middle of the box, I believe that's Carly Brinkman back there. Her side is to me, so I can't see a number, but a great job nonetheless. Now Aldrich sends it up the right side. Savannah Recker. Recker plays it to the outside, and just a little too heavy for the streaking Carson Erford. Put back in by Maya Schaber. Again, the Titans right there to take it away. They send it up the line, out for another throw. That was Madeline Hovist coming over in defense. Starting to call those defenders' names a little bit more. Aldrich passes up to Beach. 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 Oh, wow. Around a defender. Beach with another chance. The shot. The goal. Wow. Clara Beach through the defense, keeping her feet and putting it up and over the goalkeeper, and now the Titans lead by two goals. Clara Beach has been so impressive from start to, you know, here in the first 10 minutes of the second half. The control, you know, winning 50-50 balls, her control down, you know, to score that goal was just incredible. And Beach now up. To 14 goals, Maya Aldrich tacks, her, tacks on her ninth assist of the season as we step aside. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. Welcome back to StarTech Stadium in Mansfield, Madison High School, the site of tonight's OHSAA Division III State Semifinal, and it's the Ottawa Glandorf Titans 
on top of Manchester. Two to nothing, knocking on the door of their second straight trip to Columbus and Lower.com Field. Or stadium, rather. Evan Skilleter, Jerry Snodgrass with you tonight. Jacob O'Neill up top on the camera doing a fantastic job as he always does. And no call there as the no ball call. goes out. And sooner or later, Manchester is going to have to start sending some numbers forward. But Clara Beach moving the ball up the field. Beach with two goals tonight. Looking for a hat trick as she gets around another defender. She's brought down, and the referee says no foul. Wow. Wow. So a goal kick coming I up. She was it was from behind. Yeah, certainly could have been called. I don't think anyone would have argued, but I don't have the view as the, yeah, the official. Yeah, that's has, exactly so. right. And these officials are, especially deep in these playoffs, a fantastic crew, experienced crew. So play continues. It's still a two nothing lead for the Titans, a team that hasn't given up a goal since September eighth. I can't get over that. I'll probably say that six or seven more times in this broadcast because that is just an outstanding feat. Well, you know, so obviously, you know, I think, you know, the casual fan of this, you know, just, man, Emma Brinkman is, is tough. Well, she is. But so is the entire defense of, of Otto Glandorf. Titans trying to add a third goal as Manchester blocking shot after shot. Trying to get the ball forward. They get it up to Gina Tipton. Tipton has 24 goals this season, and Katie Norris with the ball now has 50. Norris plays it up the right side, but the goalkeeper comes out, and no issues for her. Emma Brinkman, a nice job coming off that line. And that was a good job by Tipton that time for Manchester. You know, controlling the middle, getting the ball ahead. Punt into midfield, and Beach is going to be able to bring it down. She has Aldrich right there, but closed off by the defender. Now Mackenzie Recker steps over. Recker tries to get it behind the defense, but overcomes Emily Ullman. Now up the left side. Good wheels there by Lauren Gunselt. 24 goals of this season for her. Titans cleared away by, or with Madeline Hovist, excuse me. Tipton into the box. Tipton runs into two defenders, and it's knocked away for the first corner of the night for Manchester. Just over 26 minutes remaining in the second half as Ella Craddock will line this up. Craddock sends it to the back post, knocked up in the air, and a good job once again by Emma Brinkman. Boy, a great cross that time by yes. on that corner kick from Craddock. Equally as good from Emma Brinkman. Brinkman, one of few seniors on this roster. This one knocked down. and Beach They able just to, don't stop, do that's they? Right. That's right. That's you got to be happy if you're your coach, um, coach Mag. Beach, another one of those seniors on this team, and she certainly leads by example, right? A she goal sure scorer, does. but look at the effort that she places. Her team's up two nothing, and she's still out there sprinting, yeah. still out there getting around defenders, just doing such a great job leading this team. They talk about winning the 50-50 ball. I think that's a 75-25 ball. That one that was going to go out, 75% chance it was going to go out, but 25%, you know, it wasn't. The effort to get there was incredible. Now the Titans take it away. That's Carly Brinkman once again stepping up. Here's Aldrich. Pardon me, that was Carson Erford. Now Mackenzie Recker into the box. Chance to cross or shoot. Ball still there. Beach tries to clean it up. And finally the goalkeeper gets on top of it. Beach almost had the hat trick. 
Good buildup nonetheless by the Titans who continue to put pressure on this Manchester back line. You know, Clara Beach is a captain for a reason. You talked earlier about her, pl you know, playing and leading by example, and she sure has. She's been phenomenal. She came into tonight with 12 goals, 11 assists. She has two goals now and multiple big plays for this Titans team as Bree Douglas has it. Douglas closed off. Good tackle there by Grace Souls. And now a deep shot taken. That was Mackenzie Wrecker. And you know what? Up to nothing. You don't really mind that. A lot of times, Jerry, you see teams, they'll shoot from deep just to see if the goalkeeper yeah, will yep. fumble the ball and they can get a deflection. And you could tell from her angle, she had the gap. She had that yeah. clear, and she had to take it. Now, again, we see the speedy Lauren Gunselt running down the left side. Gunselt with the left-footed cross. It goes out off Another of the Titans. Hit. So a corner coming up. Manchester desperately in need of a goal as we have 23 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the second half. They think about a short one here. They do take it short. They cross it back post, top of the box. And nothing doing as the Titans knock it away. And every single Titan was back on defense yeah, right there. That's, you know, again, talking about 11 players need to play defense, and they've done it. Now maybe another chance to break is they intercept it 40 yards away from their own goal. Pass to Beach goes behind her. Now taken away. Here's Grace Souls. Souls has it knocked away. Titans, Titans have done a good job of controlling that middle third, too. Absolutely. That's exactly what I was going to say there. The Titans have just suffocated Manchester. Every time they touch the ball, there's no space for them to turn and go. Now they draw a foul. 45 yards out as Aldrich with that big right foot drops it down. So looking for Carson Erford, but taken away by Kennedy Bowl. Goes out for a Manchester throw. No, they switch up the call. Or it is a Manchester throw, right. sorry. Initially called for Ottawa Glandorf. Norris has it I think maybe away. Ottawa Glandorf called it for Ottawa Glandorf. <laughs> yeah, he might be right. Again, just because of the continuous, just play hard, play through it all, and whatever happens. That one out for a Titan throw, and a substitute ready to check in as Carson Erford makes way for Kalen Grothaus. Titans have done a very good job this half of getting it out to that left side, you know, trying to get that cross. Now ball worked up the right side, and Jerry, it looks like it might be a all-Western Ohio State final as Cincinnati Country Day currently leads their match of 3-0 with 19 minutes left. What a, what a powerhouse soccer program that has been, too. This one takes a deflection on its way to the goal, but it's picked up nicely there by the goalkeeper. Maddie Cox, who, yes, she surrendered two goals, but those were two really nice goals. Otherwise, Maddie Cox has done a really nice job tonight. Yes, you can see the has. quality. And she's really been challenged back there. She has some great saves. Cox, just a junior on this team and these two teams might see each other next year we've talked about it in this broadcast but two teams full of young players contributions coming from a lot of underclassmen a lot of juniors this has been a fun matchup 0-0 zero, zero at halftime the titans able to get two goals here in the second half with clara beach you know a lot of times in division three of girls you you really notice at this level, the difference between the speed and the physicalness that you sometimes don't see all year long, you know, in Division Three, And 
those that have it, they're the ones that are getting to this level. And Otto Glendorf is really, well, both these teams have really shown great speed, great strength. I always love watching these late season games. Like you said, so much quality on the field. Yes. Player 1 through 11 can play with the ball at their feet. And yes, I am including the goalkeepers. These are very talented soccer players as well. Some great passing. And the defense has just been tremendous. Titans moving it down the left side. Another touch, trying to cross it. They keep it in. No, they don't. The ball crossed, and it'll be a goal kick. You know, in this bracket of the final four, it's very difficult to say that the two best teams aren't here because they are. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And correction, it's actually a corner as it went out off of Manchester. Titan. Fan section on their feet as this one's knotted toward the back post, but well wide as it's going to squirt out for a throw. Manchester up the left side, kept in by the Titans, knocked out for a Titan throw and a substitute ready to check in. And with the substitute, we'll step aside with 17.57 on the clock watching high school playoff soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Two nothing on that Structure Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. Uh, two goals courtesy of Clara Beach as the Titans looking to punch their ticket to their second straight state final. And they'll have a corner here as Bree Douglas will line it up for the Titans. And that's out of sheer effort to get that corner kick. Douglas, wow. center of the box, and a nice one is it's not a toward goal by Carson Erford, but it's blocked by Manchester. Titans still with possession as Tipton comes over and knocks it away. Ball back to Madeline Hovist. Hovist takes her time to send it up to Mackenzie Recker. Now back to that defensive back four of the Titans. Erford fighting for possession against Jaden McKinney and ultimately it goes out for a Titans throw. Beach drops it back. Now Aldrich, a lot of space in midfield, and if there's not, Aldrich is good at making it. Yes. She gets past the defender, but loses the handle. Knocked away, but it'll be recovered by Wrecker. Now Douglas. We've seen Douglas on the left and the right tonight. Yep. Douglas takes a heavy touch across the line for a goal kick. Hey, one cool thing now about WOSN is that you can now stream WOSN 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. You can download a Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. And what a great help that is for so many of our viewers. If you don't find coverage like this, in many places, not just across Ohio, but across this country. Just complete coverage of local high school athletics as that deep shot just goes wide. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you do find stations around the country that they, they focus really, really hard on one or two sports, right? Indiana, they'll they'll cover basketball pretty, uh, pretty in-depth. Texas, they cover football really well. But in Northwest Ohio, to have WOSN, a station that's able to cover all sorts of sports from from swimming to soccer to track and everything in between. We've had wiffle ball. We have right. wiffle ball oh, once yeah. a year. We have some flag football every now and then. Uh, it's just so fantastic to have the luxury of this kind of coverage for these athletes that work so hard, like we said earlier, year-round to perform in their sport. You know, and I know that this can be said a lot, but I have said for so many years – 
not just WOSN, but, but good media coverage like this, what it has done for high school sports. I mean, I, th- I don't think we forget that a little bit. You know, sometimes maybe we take it for granted, but it's done so much to put these kids and what they do uh, into the limelight. And it's more than winning. It's just the fact that we're, you know, their efforts, uh, everything about it, you know, are getting publicity. And it's not just the two major sports. That's right. And I say two major sports. I don't even know what the two major sports are anymore. <laughs> right, that's I think true. that's part of it. That's true, and it certainly goes by area as another shot goes up. And off the goal post, stays in bounds, but <laughs> that goal post is out. So it's out for a goal kick. Now, remember, if it goes off the corner flags and stays in play, that yep. that is part of the field, and it would continue. But the goal post certainly not a part of the field here. Titans take possession back, and they're trying to work it up that left side, but that pass beyond Douglas and out for a Manchester throw. 13 and a half left here in the second half. You know, as we get down into that, close to that 10-minute mark, you're really going to see a lot of push by um, Manchester. Down two goals. They need to get one quick. And the issue becomes... The fact that the Titans are still putting pressure on that back line, so Manchester's forced to keep right. numbers back, and it makes it really hard to get forward and get anything going. And the Titans taking it back right on the edge of their final third. A nice pass to Aldrich. Aldrich might think about a shot She was here. thinking about it, yep. I think up 2 nothing. If you don't have anything else, you might as well send it goalward. Now outside with Mackenzie Recker. Wrecker up to Savannah Wrecker. That's the record to record connection. That one out for a Manchester throw. And still only two players forward as they try to get right. it up to Tipton, but Wrecker knocks it up in the air. And nice physical play there as Carly Brinkman steps in, but the referee does blow a late whistle. So a free kick from 45 out. Chance for Manchester here to get something going. They need to put this into the box. I don't yes. think they have a choice as it's placed down by Emily Allman. Well, they keep it short. Think about a long shot, and like we've seen most of the night, that shot blocked. Beach up the left side for Douglas. Douglas tries to step over, and... Able to win a throw in for the Titans. 11 and a half to go. We just see Bree Douglas everywhere. She is. I mean, we've seen her on the left. We've seen her on the right. We've seen her back in the box playing defense. I said that, you know, at the start of the game. She's just a machine. Yeah. Doesn't appear to ever tire. She's a wonderful, wonderful girl, too. We had her on as a uh, at the end of a game not too long ago, and speaks so well and just you can just tell she's a wonderful wonderful person ball knocked down and out for a titan throw douglas leads this team this year with 21 goals also leads the team in assists with 13 and actually i need to backtrack lily hazelman leads the team with assists but she's injured and not playing as this one crossed in front of the box carson erford chases it down we talked about those injuries at the top of the broadcast, but those are two really great players. And they've for covered the them well. <laughs> yes, absolutely. McKenna Seifker injured, and, and Lily Hazelman, a player that on the soccer field and the basketball court just doesn't stop going. Right. A, a, an emotional leader, a player that works hard. And I don't want to say I'm not surprised she's injured, but as hard as she plays, it's a wonder that she doesn't get injured more because, I mean, she is an inspirational inspirational work, worker with a great work ethic. Here's Clara Beach. Beach with the left-footed shot, but right into the gut of the goalkeeper, Maddie Cox. That was a good hard shot from where she was from, too. It was. Her back was turned to the goal as she kind of swung the body around. Absolutely. So again, here, you know, we have nine and a half left, 
And there's only two, yeah. one player, yeah. two players, maybe three threatening on offense against seven defenders for the Titans. Now sent to midfield. Aldrich gets a foot on it, but it just goes out for a Manchester throw. Titans again step up. They take it away, but only briefly as Norris gets on the end. Norris changes direction quickly, but now cleared away nicely. Beach maybe a chance to get something on. I thought she was going to so collide I. with the defender there, but fortunately no collision as play continues. Taken away by Brinkman. Aldrich dropping back to play a more defensive role later in this game. You can see basically everyone except for Beach back in that final third playing defense. And I always say it's, it's important even when you're up and you need to drop back and play defense, it's important to have someone up the field. Yes to release some of that pressure too, yep. right? If you want if you need to clear the ball. When it does clear, yes. You want to have someone there. Yep. And there just like that, yep. she gets the ball. It is taken away, but but she was there. Good That's to have right. her there. There's somebody there. Titans come over, clear it away. Titan fans thinks it think it went off of Manchester, but referees saw it differently as Aldrich steps up, knocks that out for a throw. Clock becoming a very, very critical factor now. Norris turns and boots it into the box. Douglas lets it hit the turf. Now maybe a chance. Ball crossed and no touch from the Titans. Substitute entering the game with 7.20 to go on the structure. Outdoor Ohio scoreboard. 2-0. Titans on top. Two goals from Clara Beach. Savannah Recker. Savannah Recker checking in as Aldrich steps up. Nods it forward and foul called against Aldrich. So maybe a chance here. Tell you what, a goal right here can do wonders yeah, for your team. Yes. Makes it a whole different ball game. This one from 25 out. Sent toward the goal, and it sneaks in. No, sorry, it was it looked wide. Like it it was it? tough yeah. on this in angle. Fact, when she kind of bobbled a little bit. And it was touched by the goalkeeper, so I suppose that's a save. Yeah. Panthers set it up quickly. Left-footed corner. Into the box, and a good job there. My goodness, that was as close as it gets. She almost swung that in straight from the corner. Yeah, what an aggressive play by, by Emma. It looked like Brinkman got kicked in the side there as she got up a little gingerly, but able to kick that up to Beach. Beach sends it behind the defense. Running on the end of it, Savannah Recker. Recker takes a touch. Recker trying to get there, and... Probably a smart decision to yeah. not overexert. Yep. You're up two nothing. Just let that ball go out. So Manchester gets a goal kick. Now they have two offensive players all the way up. Norris and Tipton. Ball sent to midfield. And again, yeah, again look at that. Just, uh, you know, every 50-50 ball. How frustrating is that, you yeah, think? Just you would... to not be able to get any possession. As soon as you touch the ball, it's taken away. Look at Douglas go through the defense. Douglas all the way into the box, finally running into a defender. She beat four on her way to six yards in front of the goal. Now up the left side, still the Titans. The work to get around two wow. defenders. Chance, nice cross, Beach scuffs the shot wide, looking for her third. 
that ball stays in play as it goes out for a Manchester throw. But unselfishness from this team, Jerry. I mean, you could have shot that ball from the near Correct. post. Yep. Awkward angle, but it's just a nice, easy pass to the center to set up a nice chance. Obviously not the result Beach was looking for, but you just have to love how unselfish a team like this is. Aldrich, Beach, Beach, the cross, taken away. Ella Craddock. Yeah, their positioning has just been, been incredible all night long. Here's Norris, tries to get around a defender, just ends up knocking it off of Maggie Verhoff. Manchester has a throw, under four minutes to play. Up to Tipton, Tipton can't control. It's cleared into midfield, knocked down by Norris. Norris over to the far side. Kerry Clark lets it sneak past. Sorry, that's Sarah Kish. Just under three and a half now. Aldrich steps up and takes it away. And smartly just sends it down the field. Nothing there. And still the <laughs> Titans and yep. Beach closing off. I mean, look at this pressure up the field. Aldrich comes up and takes it away in midfield. And that's the culture, right? That's, that's the culture yeah, we talk about, is. a winning mentality. We're not going to hang back. We're going to play to the final whistle. We're, right. you know, it's almost like... That's because that's what we do. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's the culture that has developed. And I, I don't take anything away from Manchester. They are right. a very, very good team. Yeah. I, think, I think right now, I mean, as you look at these teams, I mean, obviously you can see this from the scoreboard, but Ottawa Glendorf is just the better team. I mean, again, that's not taking a thing away mm -hmm. from Manchester. I mean, in any matchup, usually somebody is the better team. So... Yeah, Manchester. You look at all the 50-50 balls. You look at the great ball control. Um, you know, the, the number of great crosses that they've had. Remember, Manchester 19-1 and this season. And that only loss was to Hoban, I mm. believe. Two minutes to play. The Titans, two minutes away from a second straight trip to Lower.com Stadium in Columbus with a matchup presumably against Cincinnati Country Day. And you can pretty much guarantee that all of Ottawa, all of Glendorf, <laughs> and all of Putnam County will be there. That's right. Manchester trying Desperately to do something here at the end, but Aldrich steps up, clears it to midfield. Titans again take it away. They send it down the right. Clara Beach giving chase. And Beach down and... Looks like she's not feeling good after that hit as yeah. the referee says, stop the clock. We got to check on Clara Beach. And that is not what you want to see with under no. a minute to go in a game that's not necessarily close. The good news is she's holding a shoulder, which doesn't necessarily impact the ability to run. But with the stoppage, we'll step aside as well. We'll have the final 52 seconds for you after a break right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Welcome back to StarTech Stadium in Mansfield, it's Madison High School, the host of tonight's state semifinal. A throw in violation on the far side. So Clara Beach, the injured Titan, got up and walked off holding that arm. Hopefully she is okay because this team is about to move on to play Cincinnati Country Day in the state final. 
Country Day, number one in the state poll at the end of the season. They won 4 nothing over Lynchburg Clay tonight. That game is final. This one is 20 seconds away from that. So we'll have number one against number, I think it's three. I think OG finished the season as the number three ranked team and should be a great final. Ball back to the goalkeeper with seven seconds on the clock. And Jerry Snodgrass, the Ottawa Glandorf community, will be headed to Columbus. Hey, they're running out of they're running out of signs on their, you know, when you enter the town That's right. of Ottawa, you know, on the number of state championships and the number of state final fours. So but um, again, it does take a village, and that's exactly what, you know, they're out in full force tonight. They'll be out in full force Friday, and it's, it's what they do. Congratulations to Manchester on a great season. They finished 19 and two as the Titans win their 20th of the year, 22, 20 wins, two losses. One draw this season, excuse me, it's 20 wins, one loss, two draws. But either way, the Titans win their 20th game and move on to play in the state final. Time to be determined on Friday, but opponent will be Cincinnati Country Day. want to thank the Mansfield-Madison Athletic Department once more for their hospitality tonight. want to thank Alts for sponsoring our scoreboard tonight. You can check out Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let them bring your indoors out. And as always, thank you to you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Soccer on WOSN. One more time, your final from Madison High School. It's Ottawa Glandorf 2, Manchester 0. For Jerry Snodgrass, for Jacob O'Neill, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night, and God bless. <laughs>